Well, welcome back to Oak Tree National. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about when things don't always go well, you hit good shots and bad shots, and you're gonna to have to be strong mentally. So I'm gonna take you on the golf course today. We're gonna to talk about really tough situations, what to do with them, how to use your mind. I'm even gonna teach you about my robot. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Yeah, so one of the things that's really important about playing the game of golf and getting ready to step on the golf course is I don't like to feel stressed on the golf course ever. And one of the things that helps me not be stressed is to make sure that when I approach the first tee and I get onto the first tee that I have everything I need to be ready to play. One of the things I do obviously is I mark my golf ball. So I, I'm gonna mark to make sure, I usually put a red dot right here next to the number of the ball, just to, just to signify that this is my ball. But I do this here at the, at the cart. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I have the ball markers and I have tees and everything that I need to get ready to play. So it's super important that when I get here and I grab my club to go to that tee, that I'm, I'm ready to play, that I'm not being distracted by Maybe I don't have my tee, I don't have the right tee. Don't you hate when you have to ask your playing partners for a tee or, or you're on the green asking for a ball marker? So I take care of everything like that right here. So when I step on that first tee, I have everything I need to play. So let's go up here and let's talk about something that I think is really important, which I call the robot. Now you're gonna think this is a little bit crazy, but let's talk about hitting tee shots. Now. Here, here's where I want to go with this conversation. One of the things that I like to reduce variables. If you're watching my channel and you see me talk about playing the game of golf, I'm one of those guys that says, look, if we can reduce the numbers of variables, not only in the golf swing, but when we play, that's when we play our best golf because there's less going on, there's less room for error, and we're playing to a highest percentage of playing great golf. So I'm reducing variables. But let's talk about the most variables you have are in your head. Let's think about it for a second. The thoughts that go in your head. Should I aim left? Should I aim right? Wind, yardage, all those things that go on, all the variables that go on in here. I wanna introduce you to a concept I call the robot before I hit the tee shot here on number 10. Now, what is the robot? The, the practice tee is right back there behind me. I warm up back there. Sometimes when, you, when you're on that tee over there, what are you doing? You're building the robot. That's the purpose of a practice tee. That's where you work on the mechanics of your swing, you fix your ball position, you get everything correct. That's where you build the robot. All right, so I built him back there. I built a golf swing back there. Now I need to take that robot from that practice tee and bring him over here to the first tee and use him to hit a shot. Now let's go through this. My job is to let the robot do his job. So I, have you ever heard the, have you ever heard the term I got in my own way, or people keep, I keep getting in my own way. My, my question is always like, who's getting in whose way, <laughs> right? Like you're getting in your own way. Well, you're getting in the part of you that knows how to hit the golf shots way. So what I'm gonna do is I want you to understand that when I hit shots on the golf course, whether it's this tee shot or a shot from the fairway, really what I'm doing is I'm simply telling the robot what to do and letting the robot hit the shot. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit this tee shot. Now, you've seen me do this before, all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use, obviously I use the Callaway triple track on the golf ball. What I'm gonna do here is, is decide, make a decision. I always go to the right side of the tee here because I wanna be in kind of the left half of the fairway. So I'm gonna go to the right side of the tee and I'm gonna line the robot up. I'm gonna line my track up here. And I'm gonna give myself a line. So I come back here and I just do a quick check to make sure that I'm getting the right alignment there. And you get pretty quick at it when you do it. All right, so now I got my the ball lined up. Now, here's what's very important about hitting shots. And look, I'm taking some time here with you, but this goes very rapidly when you're playing golf. You've seen me play it on my channel, so I do this pretty quickly. But what I'm gonna do here is I got my line. So I have to simply put the robot into a position and let him fire the shot down that target line. So watch this. This is what I call the red zone. I'm gonna walk here into the green zone and this is where I simply let the robot go. Now, here's the thing about it. 
when I go into green zone, you're going to see me make a little bit of a waggle or kind of a, a setting thing. This is when I let the robot do a little rehearsal and I let them hit. This is the routine that you have to have. It's all about routine. I want you to develop processes that let the robot play golf. So watch this. So I'm going to go ahead and step in here. I got my line. There it is. Step in. So I set up right on that, my target line there. Rehearsal, rehearsal, and the robot fires a shot. Now, that's what's so great about this is, is here's what didn't happen. When I stepped in here and I set up to, the, to my shot, I did a little bit of almost like robotic little movement. Then I fired the shot, boom. What didn't happen was swing thoughts. I didn't get in here and go, okay, is my grip correct? Is my stance correct? Is my alignment correct? No, I had the line already. I stepped in here, went robot, robot, and then I hit. Didn't let the robot get in its own way. Does that make sense? Let's go down there and check this shot out. I'm, what I wanna do is walk you into that right bunker and show you a long bunker shot because what I'm gonna spend some time on the course today and walk you through some maybe trouble shots and some things you can't normally practice on the driving range. So let's talk about situational golf. Now one of the things about that I do on the golf course, keep in mind that when you saw me play on the channel in the last series, I played this golf course for a score. So you saw me play here for a score. I'm not gonna do that today. My specific goal today is to come out to the course and practice. You'd be surprised that there's very, you, you can practice your swing, you can hit shots on the range, but take a look, take a look down here at this lie. You know, I just hit this drive and it's on, it just rolled down the right side here. And now I'm in a down slope in the rough in a side hill situation. So, and, and here at Oak Tree National, by the way, you can hit good shots and end up in, in some weird spots. So today I want to walk you through hitting practice shots and strategizing and these various locations that you might hit a golf ball, whether it's in a bunker, in a, a rough situation, or in any of these situational stuff. So I'm gonna to use today on the course as a practice round. Now, here's the thing about it. Sometimes you need to go to the golf course and just practice. I know you don't wanna pay for a green fee and then not play a score, but you know what? This is where you see this stuff, and you don't wanna never have experienced this stuff for the first time. Good players are good players because they have hit enough shots from these situations to understand Number one, can you even pull it off? Number two, maybe you shouldn't try to pull it off. And number three is, how do you shoot your best score or hit your best shots from these situations? So this is, let's just take a look at this situation, for example. So I'm down, let's see how far I have first. I always want to kind of take a measurement here. So I'm 129. Now to the flag. Now here's what's interesting about this. Look at that. I got to carry a bunker right there. I got a big, uh, Look, I got a huge bunker on the right. I, that's, that's kind of, you want to avoid that because obviously the pin is kind of close to that bunker and it's going to be very hard to, if I hit it in a bunker, to get it up and down. Look left of the bunker. You see that it's open over there. See how it's open? That's a really easy chip shot from that left side. So Smart Golf would say, hey, just, just bang it up there to the left. If you can get it out of here, hit it to the left side and just get it up and down. Don't be crazy and try to hit it that flag. So let's just, let's just take a look. I'm going to measure to the left side, and you see where I am on the left side there. So it's, it's 120 to that left side. All right, so how do we hit the shot? Now let's take a look real fast. And you can see I'm way, the ball is way below my feet, and I'm sitting down in the rough, so obviously not a very easy situation to get out of, and I'm 100 and, you know, 120 yards to the left-hand side, which, you know, that's a wedge for me. Um, but since it's so situational, I'm not going to be able to swing. See, here's the thing. I, if I try to make a full hard swing with this, it's very hard to balance. So I'm going to have to kind of flex my knees a little bit to stay balanced into the slope and then make kind of an arm swing and not move very much. So it's going to, I'm not going to hit it very far. So I'm going to actually hit an 8-iron. And I hit an 8-iron normally about 155. But I, I'm going to hit an 8-iron and just try to get it to the left side to give myself an easy chip. So let me grab the 8-iron. All right, so I actually grabbed the nine too, just because I want to kind of feel this. So let's get down in here and just take a look. 
Yeah, so that's that's really kind of nasty there. So I'm gonna hit the eight, and then check this out. I've I've got to bend my knees because here and look, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna basically just try to get down to that ball. And look, it's sitting in the rough, so I'm gonna play it just a little bit back in my stance and just see if I can't hack it up there to the left side. This is just about Todd. Get it up there and give yourself kind of an easy wedge shot. So let's just see what I can do here. I just don't feel like I can put any speed on the golf club here. Yeah, so it just went to the left side. It's just short of the green. And you're going to see when I get up there that it left me a pretty nice, easy chip shot to that flag. Once again, that's a smart play. If I would have tried to hit something crazy after that flag, I would have hit, my, hit, hit into the heavy grass because I couldn't really get much of a club on that. So a good example of just playing smart golf. Let's go hit the chip shot because I want to show you some stuff about chipping. So in my opinion, good golf is doing stuff like this where I played the highest percentage shot I had. It wasn't a fun to hit it in that right rough, um, but then it left me kind of a, an easy up and down and an opportunity to make par. If you play 18 holes of golf, you're going to hit good shots and bad shots. What you want to do is, number one, you want to make pars and birdies and good scores, but you really want to avoid double bogeys and triple bogeys as well. And sometimes it's hard not to want to go for that flag, something like that. But you look at the shot I hit here, I basically laid it up, and I'm not quite whole high, but it left me in a really nice level spot. And now this is a relatively easy chip. The worst score I'm going to make is bogey. I could chip it in for birdie too, because this isn't really crazy too hard. But it gave me a chance, right? So that's what's, that's what's important about this, is to get out of here with a, with a decent score and then move on to the, to the next hole. So this shot here, it's, it's basically on a little bit on a down slope, comes up the slope here, and you're going to see that this thing really breaks off to the right. And then this is kind of where you want to land the ball and let it roll itself out. So what, I'm, what I got to do is, you know, we got a false front here. So I just kind of get the ball moving in this area here and let it trickle down to the right. Tons of break in this shot. Now, so landing area is really the most important thing about this, where I land it. I'm going to let this thing roll itself out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my 58 and then see if I can't hit a nice little elevated shot over that, land it three feet or four feet onto the green and run it down to the flag. So let's see what I got here. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about technique here. Um, I like to basically hit these pretty dead-handed. I don't like to add too much wrist angle because wrist angle adds some speed. So when you watch me hit this, it's going to be very kind of dead-handed. See if I can't bump it up there. And then it'll trickle down. So now I want you to see what happened there. It's a very good shot, right? I didn't quite land it far enough, which, which, right, I hit it like right in here. But look, I gave myself the highest percentage chance that if it landed in this area here, it would roll down the slope, and now I got about a foot and a half left for par. You see what has happened there. Let's just talk through this, because to me, good golf is exactly what I just did. Hit a drive into kind of an unfortunate situation. Wasn't an easy spot. Hit it to a safe spot over here, which was just... Okay, nice, easy get up and down. Hit an average chip. Didn't hit my best chip. Hit in a good spot. Look at it. Easy par. That is good golf. And that's what I want you to understand here is if you're going to beat your friends and become a good golfer, I'm just going to tap this in. All you got to do is really, really be smart. Smart golf is just as good as great golf because to me, Nobody's perfect, and if you can take a bad situation and turn it into a, a good situation, that's how you score well. Okay, this is one of my favorite holes. You saw me play this on my channel. This is Windmill, and this is number 11 here at Oak Tree National. I, I love this hole. It, it's, it's really hard for me because there's usually a, a big south wind that you can't feel. It comes across the top of these trees. We're kind of in a little, you know, we're blocked out by some homes here, so... Anytime I keep it left, it blows it to the right. So, I mean, this is a hole, and I'm going to get my robot here. I just line the ball up straight down the left, basically the left half of the fairway. 
and you watch, if I hit it on that line, it'll bounce to the right side of the fairway. So I've got to be, I've got to get my robot lined up good. Now I'm going to step in there and just fire away. Yeah, hit it right in the right bunker. Let's go do that because that's pretty typical sometimes on this hole for me is it's very hard for me to line up to the left side. I just hit that to the right, but I want to show you a long bunker shot from probably one of the most difficult bunkers you can hit it in out here. Okay, so check this out. This is not good. Like This is what happens at Oak Tree National when you hit your drive a little bit offline. Um, that's why it's so important to, to hit your lines out here and favor that left side. I hit it right. The, wind kind of pushed it over a little bit and here I am in this right bunker. Matter of fact, I tell my brother I'm going to put a plaque over here somewhere with my name on it because I hit it over here so often. So, and look, there's a massive lip in front of me. Um, this is where you just have to play smart golf. You look at that, there's nothing I can do with that. I'm going to wedge it out and just hit a, hit a sand wedge or a gap wedge out, get it into the fairway, try to get it down there. I think I can get it down there to maybe a non-iron from the green, maybe an 8-iron. And then we're going to just see if we can't hit a really really good approach if I could if I can get get away with here with a par a bogey hey that's not too bad so let me just get in here now I'll just explain how I hit this shot normally I'm definitely not going this direction because I have that in front of me so I have to go sideways I'm gonna go that way a little bit just to give me some room but I only want to land it maybe you know it's maybe 60 yards so I'm just gonna hit a little 60 yard shot over there into the fairway and see if I can't just get it out there you know that's just right, right in the middle of the fairway so once again I just played you know I just played a couple holes here haven't hit a good tee shot yet but you just got to keep playing smart this is a game of patience right when you're not hitting the ball well here's what I want you to think about when you're not playing well and things aren't going well and things are getting kind of crazy and you're like oh I'm not playing well calm down be patient keep hitting good shots it's a really it's an important thing to do Keep putting yourself in the best chance possible and see if we can't get through some of the bad holes until we start playing a little bit better. So that's what I want you to do. So I'm just going to go out there and see if I can't hit a good shot into the green and make a par or a bogey. Okay, on my mission of playing smart golf, you know, I just hit it in that bunker over there. I just wedged it out here to the fairway. I got 100. Let me take one more quick measurement. I got 100. 148 to the flag, 155 with the slope. Um, so, and look, I, I, I'm gonna be, check this out. Look at, the, look at the windmill behind the green. See, it's moving. This is the issue I have with this hole. There's always wind coming from the, light, from the left that you can't feel. And so, I'm taking that in consideration. See, I'm thinking of that right now before I get my robot to hit this shot, I'm thinking I got to play a shot a little left or right into this flag because the wind's pushing it. Do you see what happened? I just, I figured that out off the tee. The, the wind pushed it to the right off the tee and now I'm still uh, got to keep that in mind. It's just being smart about this. So I'm going to grab an 8-iron and let's see if I can't get an 8-iron all the way to that flag. It's, it's kind of a stretch for an 8 for me but I think I can get it there. The wind's coming from the left. Let me see, can I get this there? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna grab a seven. The reason I'm grabbing the seven, I'm gonna take a little bit off the seven, is because I know that wind, it's elevated. I know the wind's not gonna help me too much. It's kinda hurting me from the left. Let's see if I can just take a, I'm choking down, so what I'll do is, when I would take a little bit off the club, I'll choke down on it, just take a little speed off of it, and let's see if I can get a shot in there and have a putt at par here. Okay, not too bad. You saw the move, ball moved pretty good to the left or right probably about 20 feet, but that's, a go that's okay. I got a 20 foot par putt. Throw some sand at my divot here. And gave myself a chance. That's, that's what's so important here, is to keep giving yourself a chance. 
and not, look, one of the things that when I play golf is I try not to put too much stress on myself. You hit a shot, play smart. It's that emotional stress of whenever you gamble on the golf course, you hit it in the trees or you try to do something crazy, then you hit a weird bad shot. Now you put tons of stress. I try to stay emotionally kind of level, no stress, hit your shots, try to make some putts. I'm pretty happy with this. In my pursuit of stress-free golf here, I, um, you know, I got, well, how far is this? Maybe, oh, 18 feet or so for, for par. But it's not, it's not fantastic, but it's gonna be okay. Bogies are okay as long as you avoid the double bogeys. The shot was good coming into the green. Um, but anyway, let's take a quick read of the putt. I'm going to pull the flag here. And let me see, it goes a little right to left. I use the uh, triple track, Callaway triple track on the golf ball. And it's going to go. So I always make sure I get the line on the triple track good. Looks pretty good, a little right to left. I like that, it may go a little more than that. All right. Okay, let's see if I can make a little par save here. Uh, pushed it out there a little bit. That's all right. Well, so not too bad, you know. Basically, played a difficult hole, hit a shot in the bunker, knocked it out there, made a bogey. But here's the thing about golf. Bogeys don't really hurt you. It's not fun to make bogeys, but double bogeys are what kill a round of golf. Because a birdie makes up for that, right? And you're gonna hit some good shots out here too. So to me, that hole didn't stress me out. I hit shot after shot after shot. I hit some good shots, hit a nice shot into the green, got out of there with a little bogey, and we can move to the next hole and hit some other good shots. This is a one shot at a time game. Hit a shot, play your next best shot. Hit a shot, play your next best shot. Try to avoid the crazy gambling type golf. Play smart and you'll make some bogeys and you're gonna make some birdies too. All right, one of the things also about for me to play good golf is monitoring how I feel. So, you know, I talk about the robot and hitting shots with the robot, but one of the things that's important, like when I line up a shot and I come in here, let me, I'm going to walk you through the process of going from what I call red zone into where I hit the shot in green zone. But what, here's what happens. When I'm back here and I select my shot and I line the golf ball up correctly, I always leave red zone with I got it, right? I got it, so I feel good about it. Then I go in here, and I just say, okay. I get in here and I let the robot hit the shot. But sometimes, here's what happens. You get right here and you go, okay, I got it. And you walk in here, and you just can't get your robot to feel very good. You just can't seem to get a feeling in there. And it happens once in a while where you get in here and it's just, I don't know if the wind picks up or you just can't get a good feeling in here. The robot just cannot set itself. You just can't get that feeling. Here's what I don't want you to do. Don't hit the shot, <laughs> right? It's so easy that you get in here like, ah, I'll just pull the trigger and see if I can hit it. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to step back out and maybe go, okay, and maybe it was just an alignment issue. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I get my line. All right, there we go. And then go back in. So important to make sure that you're set and you feel good before you pull the trigger. So here we go. So all right, feel good about that. Got my line, there we go. It's perfect right there. So that, that just went right exactly. I mean, if you could have taken the stripe on that ball and put it right in that line, it hit exactly on my line. It's going to be in the right in the right half, easy shot. But just keep in mind that 
I'm learning here on the course. This is hard to do on the driving range because when you're on the driving range, you're hitting shot. I'll do it on the driving range. I'll practice my uh, execution, like what I call execution. I like routines. I like practicing the routine. Practice an execution routine on the range. So when you come to the course, you just run the execution routine and you got you know monitoring the robot and just firing shots and keep an eye on if you get a bad feeling. I saw one time I was playing with a friend of mine and he goes to hit his shot and a, and a, a butterfly kind of was messing with the golf ball flying around and he kind of waves it off and he hits the ball and I thought you know that's so distracting he should have stepped back and then gone back in after the butterfly left. So there's a lot of things that can distract you while you're playing. You want to make sure that you feel really good before you hit the shot. Okay, like I said, right down the middle. This was this is a good drive. Now let's see here. All right, 155. Actually, it's 158, but I'm downhill, so it's 155. So, you know, it's here's here's what's interesting is when I play. Um, I'm always kind of monitoring wind. Maybe it's because I'm Oklahoma from Oklahoma that we always deal with a lot of wind here. A lot of good players uh, have learned to play in a lot of wind in this state. And so I know that because 11 goes this way and the wind comes this way, that this hole is actually straight down wind. So even though this will stretch an 8-iron for me a little bit, I'm going to hit an 8-iron just because I know it's straight down wind. Um, by the way, I can't feel the wind. I mean, I can't feel it. It's just so in the valley here. But I know it's downwind. I guess my point is, is I'm, I'm, I'm always... Um, I'm always assessing, I'm learning as I play, and I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring as I play. So, for example, and I can tell you right now, because I know this pretty well, that the next hole is also almost this exact same line as shot. So if this, if this shot goes a little extra yardage because of wind, I know the next hole will. If this one doesn't, then I know the next hole won't. So you kind of see I'm learning as I play. It's just maybe from experience of playing a lot of golf that I've kinda, I keep track in my mind of what's happening. All right, so let's hit this 8-iron. Let's go, uh, the kick, green will kick it a little bit to the left. So I'm just going to aim just to the right of the flag here. Flag's right in that shadow there, so just keeping it favoring just right side a little bit. It's right at it. Ah, uh, it's pretty good. Maybe five feet right of the flag. See, that went, that ball went about, hmm, that went 155, 156 easy. But anyway, hit a really good shot, hit it solid. Good flight, just right of the flag. And got a pretty easy birdie putt. It was a good shot, and one of the things that I like to do, and you can see, I can see my ball mark here. One of the things that I like to do is, I mean, this was exactly, you can see it's exactly hole high. So that eight iron went, it went 155 based on what I had measured. So sometimes I'll just keep track of, I'll just keep track of how far my clubs are going. And like I hit that shot pretty good. If I wouldn't hit that eight iron very good, I wouldn't really know how far my eight iron's going. So, that's a pretty good indication that my eight iron goes 155 yards. So that's, that's something I take a mental note of. And just think if I had another shot similar to that today, I know exactly how far my eight iron is going today. So that's I, it's just a mental note. Okay, so let's try to make a pretty putt here. Um, I'm gonna fix these ball marks in front of me. And one of the things I'm gonna do for you here is do a quick read. Some of you were asking about green reading. These are very subtle greens out here at Oak Tree National, very subtle. So, so one of the things that you have here is we need to get a good line. So sometimes I'll put my ball down, I'll kind of leave my mark down, and I'm going to um, just take a quick look. I'm going to find the flat spot. So I'm going to go over here, and okay, so this goes, it's pretty flat. So what's happening here is it's coming off the slope here, so it may move a little to the right. But then as I come down here, it's going to the left. So pretty subtle, pretty subtle. So it's almost straight. I think it's moving, yeah, it's moving a little down here to the left. So I'm going to play this right edge, depending on how much speed I give it. 
So I'm going to play this a little bit right edge. And what I'll do is I put the triple track down. I'm going to give myself a little optical line. Oh, that's wrong. That's on the wrong side. Let me let me get that back. So, all right, let's take a look at that. Okay, so I'm going to go checking my line out. Okay, that's right edge. All right, so I think that's the line. I'm going to give it a, a try to give it a speed that goes about a foot past the hole, and just try to get it right on that line right there. Pretty nice, and so, man, it's just all about speed down that hill. Um, but hey, here's what's so cool about this, and this is, what, this is why I always talk about playing smart golf, is that I didn't play 10 very well, knocked it in the bunker, kind of in the rough, got it up and down, good par. 11, played smart, hit a bad tee shot, played smart, made bogey. Coming in here, 12, hit a good drive, hit a really good approach, I don't know how far that was, maybe, maybe 12 feet, 13 feet, and I make a, a birdie putt. I'm right back to even par. That's what I'm talking about. If I would have done something stupid back on 11 and made double, now I'm, I'm chasing my tail and I'm trying to make more birdies. Just keep playing one shot at a time. That's today's lesson out here at Oak Tree National. So hey, you know, what did we learn today, right? So I just played three holes here at Oak Tree National, which obviously is a fantastic play to learn. I'm going to take some notes. Like, as you know, I always do. I grab my notebook out and I, talk, and I write down some stuff that I may have learned today, whether it was about the robot, which I taught you about, so maybe some trouble shots, maybe it's about distance control, and even the wind, all those things that you deal with while you play. So I'm going to take some notes on my round. I'm going to conclude it here for you today, Oak Tree National. But don't forget, if you like the channel, don't forget me a thumbs up. Make some comments below and tell me what you want to see. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again here at Oak Tree.